All right, Rick. So we are in, you know where we are? It says Overland Experience. The Overland Experience. Have you, have you done any overlanding? Over, overlanding. No, but I have a khaki shirt. I have a khaki shirt. Yeah, uh -oh. I, I got pockety pants. I got a pockety pants. You even pants. got tear off pockety pants. And, and a hat. And I got the hat. Yeah. So I left mine at home. I only take it when I do real over whole, real overland like I'm Australia. To get into the overland experience, I've got the pockety pants, the khaki shirt, and the hat. Right. But do I have the snorkel or the rooftop tent? <laughs> Let's go yeah. see if you really need that stuff. Let's find out. Right here, guys. Oh What's wait, going on wait. Here? Whoa! Liam, our fine uh, videographer, cameraman, just said, "Look find behind us." I don't know this which one. one. This one. Wow. This is, this, this might be Overland. It's got, it doesn't have a snorkel. But it has six has the, doors. Has the tent. Well, yeah. the six doors. I mean, who needs six doors? Unless you For like all your the Brady friends. Bunch. Yeah, Brady Bunch, yeah. You know, you could you have a bunch of friends in here. When was the last time you had seen kids overlanding? What, I saw kids overlanding? You did? Always. Never. Yeah, well, I actually Back do. Back station my, wagon, in my maybe. Four, in my four-wheel drive club. Uh, yeah, okay. they get, we got all kinds of kids. Okay. So maybe the six-door. I mean, most of them only need a four-door. But um, this is a crazy... Com crazy it's pretty build. crazy. Do it you see build. how many wheels are in the back? Matches the down of doors. Find out. We got six wheels for six doors. That's right. And, man, look at this. It's six-wheel drive. So we got pass-through some kind of differential. What are those things? I don't know. They're big. Those are big differentials. Big differentials. Yeah. Wow. This is crazy. Okay, so... so I, the one thing I, I know about overlanding, so this is it, Rick, and you, you and I know both those. We crossed Australia together, right? Right. Right. We did. And one of the things that was always of interest or concern to us was range. Right. Fuel economy Fuel and range. Fuel economy and range. So with Absolutely. whatever big block that has an, it, an eight-wheel drive, I wonder what kind of fuel cell it's got. Fuel cell? I, I see 50 gallon, no, a 20 gallon, what is that? It's a keg. I see a beer keg. A beer keg. Yeah. You used to have one of those like in a dune bucket. I don't, I think it's for show. It doesn't function. It doesn't yeah. look like it's hooked is it up. Plum, is it plumbed? It, no, it's not plumbed. So we got beer keg. Okay. But that's not the we got tank. got fancy lights. We got fancy lights. But I'm thinking you would get, if, with a standard Jeep fuel tank, you'd probably get what, like 40 miles? 50. Per tank? Right. 50. However, when you run out when of you, fuel, you take this off. You could take this and go TV get fuel. Off. Yeah, yeah, I like that too. All right. Yeah. So we've got a little bit of a clearance issue here. I'm wondering, okay, so physically they were able to, maybe the, you know what it is, Rick? It's like once you run out of fuel, you start driving the rear tires with the UTV tires. Oh, that's why the because they're sitting. UTV tires are sitting on right. the, oh my gosh. And I'm, I'm sure it's a balancing act to keep this thing, you know, yeah. centered on the other. It's got a permit. They'd be fun to watch. They're legal. They'd be fun to watch this oh, thing, yeah. like trying to drive the vehicle, the Jeep, with the UTV power. Well. It would probably fall into the cracks and get eaten up. You notice it's on the front too. Pretty cool. I guess at the end of the day, what we do know is that, well, we actually don't know that if this is actually going to qualify as an overland kind of vehicle. Let's move on. Let's get to something with a rooftop tent. We need, and a snorkel. Right, because a rooftop tent and a snorkel are the epitome of the overland right. accessories. Let's walk around because we don't, we're not another Sprinter van here. We're not another Sprinter. Do you guys get that? Not another Sprinter. So I'm in Baja. Somebody puts a, a decal on the windshield of my truck, my rig, and it says, not another sprinter. <laughs> I laughed my beep off <laughs> because it's like, Baja is like inundated with sprinter vans and yeah. people that like drive down the pavement. Thank God they don't go off the pavement. Well, know, they because then they'd be, in our, they'd be in our place, yeah. in our land. So let's go around this group of really, really cool. Uh, sprinter know, vans? Sprinter vans, <laughs> yeah. Let's go over to this one. We got a, We got rooftop tents. We got trailers. Uh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. We got to take a detour over here. This box. This one. Okay, so Rick, you know Dan Gregg. <laughs> yeah, this is his right? rig. <laughs> this is the guy. So, so this is someone that actually does it. So update for you guys. You've probably seen Dan on the Gun Jeepin' channel. Dan is the real deal. If you want Overland. Dan's the man. Hey, that's like, I'm a poet. 
but <laughs> you don't know it. Dean, I met him just after we finished like a couple of years crossing the Americas, South America, Central America. He was heading to Africa. And he yeah. spent three years in Africa, like not just bebopping around Cape Town, but like up through the Kalahari, through yeah. Angola, but how the did he DRC. Do it? He did he it did in, in a, a jeep. jeep by himself. By himself. Now that's overlanding. He had an Ursa Minor rooftop, yeah. you know, pop, expandable rooftop tent on it. The guy's the real deal. It's really cool. Let's check out this rig. This is his new build. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't see Dan around. Okay, Do you see oh, Keep Back? Another, oh. overla overlanding accessory that everybody thinks they have to have. Well, they actually work. So these are cool. And why are they orange? So you can find them when you lose them under the sand. Which is also why you have a leash on them. You have a leash. leash. Trust me. You yeah, need, you these need are the leash. tracks that actually work. You put them on your tire, you drive away. I've done it more what than we, once. What is it that we don't like about Max tracks? You got to carry them. No, they're bright orange. We don't like the fact that Brad, who created the Max tracks, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like this great thing, and like everyone in the world has knocked them off yep. and made their own little cheesy version of whatever that want right. to be Max tracks. If you guys are going to buy it, <laughs> fork out the money it costs to actually yep. buy the, the original, the, the real, real deal, the best. The that's Max tracks. Nobody paid me for this endorsement. No, it's because we've used them. I've used them extensively. We have got them unstuck. Remember, I was stuck in Baja, right? Yeah. Like three months ago, weren't by myself, by yourself, because you weren't close to, to dark. Me? Across the salt flat, down yeah. I went. Yeah. You know what my mistake was? I had my max tracks. I did not have my second set of max tracks, and I was like, it was, it yeah. was looking grim. Anyway, yep. That's all I got to say about oh, max, yes, tracks. We like max tracks. So Dan, Dan's been building this Best box part. for about a year. We met him at, uh, I met him years ago, but he's been look at the interior of it. It's got an extensive amount of interior space, storage, cabinetry. He's got a small fridge freezer. And this thing, I mean, look inside this, Rick. Could you live yeah. in that? Oh, easily. Easily. I can live in my flat vendor. This so, would be like the Taj Mahal. Dan's first rig was just a two-door uh, JK. And yeah, that's what he spent nice. a couple years in going through um, through the Americas. And then he moved into the four-door with Ursa Minor Top. And he's like, this is luxury. And now he's in this. He's like, I'm going to get soft. Pretty nice. Yes. So, cool fact, this box... Although it looks like this big, huge thing, it actually weighs less than what he took off. Right. And when you see how much that he's gained for how yeah. much little weight, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's an engineering feat. This is how you do it. And weight is an extremely important factor yeah. when you're going overlanding, cross-country, whatever else. Weight will kill you. And the uh, floor space, if you're looking at like cubic or square feet, it's actually, you could fit two gladiator beds in this. Yeah. You did a diagram of it where you could actually put two gladiator beds in side by side. So it's pretty cool. So you're going to find, yes, he probably has a snorkel, does he? Nope. And, and by the way, folks, come around here. Yeah, so here. Liam, come on around here. I want to talk about uh, what I have mistakenly just called a snorkel. Fred Williams will say, you know how, you know how uh, if you're an overlander and you meet you know, on the road or if you're a motorcycler, so, you, know, you put your hand down, it's like, hey, if you're a jeeper, it's a couple fingers off the wheel. If you're an overlander and you got a snorkel, it's that. It's like, <laughs> hey, I'm cool. Are you cool? And if you got a rooftop tent, <laughs> it's a Fred Williams. Oh my God, he told me that sure. the first time I'd laugh, my <laughs> beep off. So this uh, is not a snorkel, guys. Well, if you look down here, well, how many people have come, come by and said, um, Hey, you must be able to go through some really deep water. Yeah, because that'll keep your air right up there. Right, right. That's false, guys. I mean, it does help because the intake, air intake on most vehicles is like right under the fender well. But what else is right under the fender well when you're ripping across the desert? Dust. Dust. A lot of dust. dust. Like dust, dust, dust. Lots of yeah. dust. Any, any terrain other than like rock. Well, then you have rock dust. Anything. <laughs> Still. So bottom line, guys, is... And I just stand corrected myself because it, yeah, it could be called a snorkel. We call them snorkel loosely. Like, this is a raised air intake. Yeah. See that? It's got a, um, a like filter. a turbo spiral air filter that collects big stuff off the top, collects it in a little bin. Here, you can take that off. You can clean it. This will save not only your air filter, it will save your motor. And you'll also notice that, except for this kind, 
you do have a snorkel looking thing, but if you have it backwards, you get less dust than facing forward. And less bugs. And less bugs. So you don't want it as a bug collector. It goes the other way. Right. Unless you just want it so I, don't, I don't know if I could do that with, can I do that? Oh yeah, it's like, this is the, the greeting if you got to snorkel. That's <laughs> if you know what you're doing. Yeah. So this is like super cool rig. I love it. it. So he's been building this. He is um, about ready to take off and actually spend time in, the, in North America after Africa and everything else yeah. he's been doing. So right now he's just finishing the build. I wish he was around it. we could talk to him, but all right, let's keep moving. But here's his, here's yeah. his tagline. Yeah, it's the road, the road chose me. You can find Dan Greck there. Or Dan Greck's uh, The Road Chose Me. He's also got a couple of awesome, awesome books. And if you want to know what it's like to uh, travel through, um, yeah, check out the map. Come on in, Liam. You want to check out um, his books because he came up, if you follow this line, you got Cape Town. This is the eastern side coming down from uh, Kenya, uh, Tanzania. Uh, Mozambique through um, Swaziland, Lesotho down to Cape Town, but this is the crazy stuff. This goes up through Namibia, up into Angola, Congo, DRC. I mean, this is like the dark, dark side of Africa and the crazy stuff. I haven't been there. It's on my <laughs> list, but it's like he's legitimate. He's a legitimate real deal. It is a dangerous side. Yeah. Yeah. In dark Africa. You know, people might wonder why they call it Dark Africa. It's not, it, has, it doesn't have anything to do with skin color. It had to do with the fact that, that there was nothing on the map. Right. It was like just empty space. They call it like the empty quarter up in Saudi Arabia and the, the you know, Eastern Sahara, Egypt. It's like, there was just nothing out there. So they're like, we don't, we don't know what's there. Deepest, darkest, darkest Africa. Darkest, nothing there. All right, I'm gonna hand Rick the mic. Okay. People are tired of hearing me talk. Yeah. So, if you look back at World War II, here's an interesting tidbit. They had a lot of beaches, a lot of beaches that uh, the Americans had to assault and go up on. So they had these enormous-looking landing vehicle track machines and different kinds of boats that would land on the beach. I just saw, and they're all gray. So I was looking over here and noticed. At least from the back half. I swear that was a World wow. War II. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen one of those before. I haven't either. You, you, you were talking like, um, like uh, amphibians. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't the back look like amphibious stuff? Like a GPA. GPA for, yeah. uh, for the little and jeeps. And the little ones. And the, and the, and the big trucks. ones landing. Those were, those were the full-size ducks. Right, right. D-U-K-W's. So there are some similarities here. Oh, that's a lot of similarities. Especially I, the color. But I don't know. Okay, don't, so anyway. Speakers, externally mounted speakers. I'm trying to figure out. It's to keep, that's to keep uh, bad game away. All right. Okay, so let's move let's on. Keep moving on. Move it on. Move it on. Move it on. I think we'll have to really. We're going to go over here because this has the most canvas of anything. Let's walk around the front. Yep. Most canvas covered vehicle. How's that sound? Is that an award? Most canvas covered vehicle. All right. That's an award. First place award for most canvas covered vehicle at SEMA is this. This F canvas covered? 50 Econoline yeah. van that we're not sure if it's a Quigley or a sportsmobile or a just custom conversion. But yeah, could be. But obviously your living quarters are all the way up top. That's right. Yep. And we got the uh, canvas shower enclosure. I think that's what this is. Yeah, privacy. Uh, I, not anybody in there? No, no. They didn't say anything. Two ladders, so you can get up your gear and you can actually get into get your tent. tent. So it's interesting though because so many of these conversions, especially the sportsmobiles, they'll have the uh, top that actually pops up on the top of it. So you get right. in and it's a crank and it just... Rather than a rack with than, a tent on top. No, wow. it is part of the vehicle. It is right, the that's top what I mean. Not it, this. It rolls up, right. This is a tent on top of mm -hmm. a rack. Right. Where so some of them, like you say, the, advantage, the top pops up. Especially when you're traveling in places where you may need to make a quick um, exit in the middle of the night. Maybe people <laughs> come by your camp that are not so friendly, that type of thing. Maybe you're stuck, uh, you, you get run over by a wildfire like I did in Kalahari about 15 years ago. Yeah. It's like you do not want to spend time taking that tent down. No, you just so drive you can away. bail out of your tent, down into the cab. I mean, that's one of the cool things about vans. Oh, is that absolutely. You have access to the driver's absolutely. seat. And from the driver's seat, you can just like turn around. And you got your kitchen and your bed and mm -hmm. everything else. So I love the idea. 
Um, and and this much. one has an extra living quarter. Uh, let's open that flap. Let's see what's in here. Let's walk around it. Okay. Not the same as opening a flap and looking through. <laughs> All right. So not sure who the maker is. But the, uh, I mean, the original guys that were doing this were Foxwing. Remember that? Yeah, a long time ago. Hey, look, they actually have a high lift. That's cool. It's so clean. Well, the whole they, they polished the wheels and spooged them. I know, them, I know right? it's a show truck. But look, if you look, these bumpers, you can actually use a high lift on them. You can. Well, and at least part of them. Nope, the here. Hansen? A what? Hanson. Looks like a Hanson. Hanson makes great Hansen stuff. Makes pretty good stuff. Yep. So, that's pretty tough. And you'd never no notice it the first time, but if you spend a lot of time in the sun, a sunshade actually is pretty handy. We used it all across The Australia. sunshade is... Yeah. So guys, sunshades are awesome. and uh, They're just know, not really good in the wind. Get. They're not good in the wind. Yeah. Um, but you know, our trip across Australia, I mean, you've been there a number of times. I have been, you know, there a number of times. Africa, even Mojave Desert. It's like having a place that you can get out of the sun is super important. Even if it's just the overhang of a, say, a rooftop tent that's can't leave it off the side. Absolutely. Just a little shade. Which is also why we're out here standing in the sun. No, it's bright, bright. But okay. the other thing is, guys, you just need to be, you need to be careful on which ones you get. And that if you do have something like this, I don't, I don't see a, a model on this, but like Foxwing was one of the original companies that made the like 270 degree tent or uh, shade awnings. If you don't buy a really good one, they're very fragile. So we have seen them just taco in the wind. You'll get a gust of wind at 30, 35 miles an hour and the whole thing is pretty much shot because um, it'll just taco over. So okay. just got to buyer beware, be cautious, do your homework. All right, let's see what else is going on. Is that is that a Riv is that a Rivian? I don't know, but it's a killable uh, Jeep. Okay. If you're going to be extended camping somewhere, a base camp, that's probably a great idea. What's that? Having all this electrical stuff. That way you can power your lights, so you can take four hundred watts. All right. So what's Rick's talking about is the solar panels up here. This looks like it might be a Merlin 100 watt solar panel on the top. I'm not sure, but um, they've got four panels, and those are looking at the cell count. They're 100 watts a piece. This electrical stuff. And when you've got a um, a charge controller for it, uh, it will charge not only your it it changes the amperage and voltage. It basically solar panels will put out say 36 volts or something like that on a panel. Um, but it will basically reduce that down, adjust the amperage, and put the, the uh, voltage at something your battery can digest, which is 12 to 14, 12 to 14 volts. And then you've got a uh, charge controller, which actually either A, will be charging both batteries, your engine batteries and your house batteries, or when um, your house batteries get down to a certain voltage, usually around 12.2, it'll shut them off so you don't kill your engine battery. And it, yeah, and it's really some... Yeah, so isolate also, them. final thing before we cut off, what is this called? A raised air intake. Right. Which way is it faced? It's in the bug catcher mode. In the bug catcher mode. There you go. All right. <laughs> so thank you very much, guys. Chris, I think we've had a good time on the outdoor experience. Amazing and time. Amazing. I feel like an overlander now. It was the overlanding experience. <laughs> it's it's you right. Have, you right. have the right shirt. <laughs> I do kind of. Pockety pants, khaki shirt. Yeah, but I need Aussie Apple hat. Ads. I need Apple Oh, yeah. Well, There's I think something. he's okay. okay. All right, guys. All see right. you next time. See you next time.